What's up folks, so I'm back again and I put out a post recently on my Instagram asking you questions as to what you find most difficult in the fitness industry. What information do you need that you really, really struggle to get hold of on the whole? Now, so many of you asked, how fast should a transformation be? How long should it take to get a particular result? Okay, now for each of you out there, this is very, very different. One thing I'm gonna start with on this video is to say you must never, under any circumstances, compare yourself to somebody else, anybody else. That could be your brother, could be your sister, could be your housemate, it could be a workmate, it could be a fitness model, it could be your favorite influencer. Every single person is different, and especially in the world of Facebook and Instagram and social media, the majority of people are pulling wool over your eyes. They do not look the way you think they do year round and even if they do they are probably doing things that you are not and you are not willing to do very very important to understand that comparison is the thief of joy do not compare yourself to anybody else because you will always lose it's very very rare that anyone it's human nature compares themselves to somebody worse than them we will always try and find someone slightly better than us to compare ourselves to and chase down. Whereas unfortunately in the world we live in, we are setting unrealistic goals for ourselves because what we are seeing is not necessarily the truth. Now, that out of the way, there is no real answer to this question. How long should it take? There are a few factors involved which we're gonna go ahead into in this video. But first up, you will have seen something like this before. It's essentially what we call the response continuum, okay? It's where you as a person, you as an individual will fall on the response continuum. At one end, the extreme end of the scale, we have a non-responder, okay? This is someone who does not seem to respond to any stimulus, any amount of hard dieting. Now, realistically, there's gonna be a load of you out there right now going, oh yes, this is me. <laughs> it's probably not you. This is almost nobody, okay? The issue is that you've probably not been compliant enough or stuck to the right thing for long enough, okay? Very few people fall at the non-responsive end of the scale. At the other end of the scale, we have the rapid responder, somebody who seems to change no matter what. These are the people who walk past a set of dumbbells and come out the other side jacked. These are the people who decide to have one less Haribo on date night and come out absolutely shredded. We all know these people because they piss most of us off, okay? Again, very few people are there, certainly more up here than there are down there, okay? Now, for the majority of you, the general population, you are falling somewhere between these two lines here, okay? You're neither a rapid responder, nor are you a non-responder. This is a good place to be, okay? But there are factors that are going to dictate where you fall on this scale and where you fall within there, which is where most of you are. First up, we talk about genetics, you know? Where are you from? What is your heritage? You know, are you genetically predisposed to putting on more muscle than your average person? This is going to help with the transformation because you're going to increase your metabolic output much, much quicker. You're gonna burn more calories, etc. Visually, you're probably gonna get a more pleasing result much, much quicker. Are you naturally very skinny? Is your entire family naturally very skinny? Do you struggle to put on muscle? If so, the chances are you're gonna stay very, very lean, okay? So you're responsive in that respect, but with regards to putting on muscle, you're non-responsive. So you see how you can fall on either side of the this dependent on the goal and that is also very very important to try and work out is understand are we talking about fat loss or are we talking about muscle are we talking about both because again your position on this continuum will change dependent on that the second factor that is going to dictate where you fall on this realistically or how fast you change is your actual effort because what a lot of people do is they will compare themselves to someone who is training three times harder than they are who is dieting three times harder than they are even though they may be on the same program, you could be following exactly the same instructions, but your execution of those instructions could be very, very different indeed. And that means where you fall on here in any given program is going to be hugely different. Now, the common thing we talk about here is, for instance, a lot of my own clients from the last 10, 12 years who think they are training hard, online clients, let's say, who then come and train with me, realize that they haven't trained hard at all, that they've been running through the motion, spinning their wheels in the gym. Usually two to three weeks after training with me in person, their entire training has changed, their entire body has changed. So instead of where they seem to think they're somewhere down here, by actually doing things properly, suddenly, they're up here. Okay, they go from non-responsive to rapid responder because of the execution of the instructions they've been given. And this is really, really common. So it's important to understand the exertion or the effort that you are putting in versus the effort that's actually necessary to get the rapid transformation, okay? So that input is going to dictate where you are 
from an output point of view. Another factor that we will take into account is that some of you at some point during your diet, and this is really, really, really common, will suddenly change where you fall on this continuum. This is down to health. Now, one of the things that will happen if you are on the right plan, the right diet, you are training the right amount, you are recovering correctly, is that your body is probably not going to allow you to mobilize fat until you are healthy. And again, the majority of people that come into a diet or a transformation plan are probably not that healthy to start with. So sometimes what needs to happen is your body needs to reach a state of health. It needs to feel comfortable. It needs to be hormonally in the right place before it will suddenly say, okay, do you know what? I'm cool with this. I can drop fat. So what you may find is for many of you is that when you start a diet, when you start a new training regime, is you're again somewhere down here. You could be doing everything right. You could be training really, really hard. You could be dieting perfectly. And you know, the effort put in is exactly what is needed. However, for some reason, you're still not changing. The reason for that more often than not is your body simply isn't yet healthy. It is still inflamed. Maybe your liver still isn't working properly. Maybe your gut still needs a little bit more time to heal. And what often happens at this stage is that you will stay here for three, four, five weeks maybe. And then suddenly out of nowhere, Overnight almost, you go from being completely non-responsive to a rapid responder. Everything changes because your body has reached a state of health. It has reached a state where it says, do you know what? I know I'm nourished now. I'm comfortable. I'm getting everything I need. So I'm prepared to get rid of the shit that I don't need. Okay, so this again can affect where you fall on this continuum. So ultimately, based on what I've said, there is no real answer because it changes based on input, it changes based on genetics, it changes based on health status, and of course it's gonna change based on the actual program you are on. You know, are you doing HIT only? Are you doing weight training? Are you strength training? Are you training for hypertrophy? Are you training for fat loss? Okay, we have to understand the goal, we have to understand the input, and that's gonna dictate the output. One of the things that I think causes a lot of confusion in the industry is that you as the end user, as the client, as the trainee, is being pulled from pillar to post by trainers. There are a number of trainers out there who focus on rapid transformations, okay? It's a skill, it's an art. Getting someone a very, very rapid transformation whilst keeping them healthy, keeping their mind in the right place, is an extraordinary skill, and very few people can do it well. There is the other side of the industry who aren't capable of doing that, whether through lack of experience or education or will, they are simply not capable of doing it. And what you tend to find is that those people will bash the other people and vice versa. Okay, there's this game of abusive tennis goes back and forth. Now, the reality of it is, whether you are in for a rapid transformation or not, there is absolutely no reason, if done well, that a rapid transformation, extreme transformation, cannot be sustainable if it's done correctly. You know, the Live Up program is a prime example of that. Again and again and again, we get almost unbelievable transformations that people are still in that shape four or five years down the line, okay? Proof is in the pudding. But of course, some people who try to get rapid transformations who may not necessarily know how to do it safely are taking clients to extremes and this is causing problems. When done correctly, a rapid transformation is sustainable and the key to it is that for everyone bashing these rapid transformations, saying they're unsustainable, it's just a lack of knowledge, which is cool. Eventually that knowledge will be picked up but it's important to strike while the iron's hot. The reason a rapid transformation is a very, very, very good idea, if you know how to do it correctly, is because motivation is high at the beginning. Your need, your want to change is going to be red hot when you first start. However, if you've been battling away for six, seven, eight months trying to lose, say, 10% body fat, you're probably gonna to start to lose focus. Things are gonna become a bit more of a nightmare and you eventually are gonna start cheating, slipping. So strike while the iron's hot. Aim for a rapid transformation that is sustainable. If you don't know how to do that, speak to somebody who does to give you the guidance needed. Just because there are so many trainers out there throwing so many ideas into a pot to be controversial, it usually just points to holes in their particular knowledge. There are ways to do the right thing very, very quickly and sustainably. Now, this is me talking about a continuum, the results continuum, response continuum, and how fast you should or shouldn't change and what factors affect that. But let's set out some goals. So for all of you out there, there are certain goals that you should be aiming for when trying to lose fat or build muscle. We start off with fat loss. For the majority of people, that should be stage one of a transformation. It's to get as lean as you possibly can. Now, realistically, a nice, comfortable goal that everybody should be able to achieve if they're doing things right, let's start with a body fat percentage, is 
to 1% of body fat per week. Okay, 0.5 to 1% of body fat per week on average is a really, really good goal to go for. The reason I say on average is because right at the beginning, you'll probably lose it quite quickly. Towards the end, it will start to come off slower. So you need to work out an average, okay? Maybe I've lost 2% this week, but only a half percent the next week. That doesn't mean you have done anything wrong. It just means that this is what's gonna happen, okay? So 0.5 to 1% of body fat per week is an adequate goal to set. So that gives you some idea of how fast you should be aiming for. But again, this is going to come into play. Secondly, if you decide that weight is your thing, you know, I'm not a massive fan. Anyone who follows me knows that I'm not a fan of dropping uh, or measuring weight as a parameter for your progress because it's too infinitely changeable. It could be water retention, how much you've eaten, whether you've gone to the toilet, the weather, whatever, okay? So if you choose to use weight as your parameter, again, I would say, a suitable loss, safe, is about 0.5 kilograms to maybe one kilogram per week, okay? But again, that's the extreme end. So I would say to aim for 0.5 kilograms average loss per week, and you are on target. You are probably going to be safe. You are probably not going to be dropping muscle. Again, I'm not a fan of tracking weight. My favorite way of tracking things, because ultimately people come to me for a visual transformation. Obviously I take care of their health, I take care of their performance as well, but ultimately the number one goal for most people is a visual transformation. So for me, it makes sense to track the visual progress. Okay, so we talk about photos. Okay, every single week you take your photos at the same time of day, in the same condition, same lighting, etc. ideally even the same clothing. And then you decide, have I made progress, have I not? Now, realistically, if you are doing things right, you will probably see minor changes every single week. Maybe every two weeks should be visual changes. But you need to be critical of that. You need to be looking for it. Don't be overly critical of yourself. Look for the small things. And one of the common factors that occurs here is that people feel smaller in their genes. They can see they've lost inches. They are being told they're leaner, but then they have a bad day on the photos, maybe because they're holding some water, maybe because they're a little bit stressed out, they didn't sleep well, and then they decide that it's all gone to shit and they fuck it up. Don't do that. If you see or feel progress, then you are probably progressing. Don't allow any of these measures, whether it's weight, whether it's a percentage measurement, or whether it's photos, to knock you off track. Be consistent. Do the right thing again and again and again, and you will find that eventually you get to exactly where you want to go, and it will happen a lot faster. When you look back, it always has happened a lot faster than you think it has. When you're looking forward and you say, oh, six months, fucking hell, but when you look back on that six months, you're going to think, Jesus Christ, I did a lot in that time. That was absolutely awesome. Okay, so Dependent on where you fall in this continuum, that's the number one. You're not always gonna respond as fast as anybody else, so don't compare yourself to other people. The factors that you're gonna to have to take into account are your genetics, you know, your genetic heritage, um, your input, how hard are you training, how hard are you genuinely dieting. The program that you're on is going to have a big factor. But if we're setting goals, 0.5 to 1% per week of body fat, if you've got a fair amount to lose, obviously the less fat you have to lose, the slower all of this is gonna happen. And if we're talking about weight, 0.5 kilograms per week is about what you want. So that's like one pound, possibly two pounds if you're a real, real responder. Okay, so this should give you an idea of how fast you should change. Of course, if you've watched this video and you're expecting a really specific answer, there is none because every single one of you out there is different. Find a program with a trainer, whether that's me or somebody else who knows what they're doing, has delivered results again and again and again from a wide range of different people, not just one type of person, not just a bodybuilder, not just highly focused robots, who are eating broccoli and chicken six times a day, okay? People who work with real people. If you do that, you're probably going to be in good hands and this is gonna be really, really positive for you. Never compare yourself to anyone. You should be cool. Remember, no matter what anybody says, don't bash a rapid transformation. The faster you can get that transformation healthily, there is a caveat to that, healthily, and that's down to your coach, the better because you are highly motivated at the start. And if you are not getting rapid results, you will find that your motivation rapidly dwindles. Okay, it's all very well, these online coaches saying, oh, it should be sustainable, these rapid transformations are not healthy. It's just because they have no fucking clue how to do them, and that hurts them. Fingers crossed this has helped you out. It's been done before many, many times. It's very, very true. Try to use it as your reference point when figuring out how to change. Don't beat yourself up because you're not changing as fast as your next door neighbor.